ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 116 of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, school shooter Nicholas Cage, and, <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, I'm in the warehouse and recording this one. Uh, what day is it? Uh, fucking Friday. It's a Friday today. Um, trying to get a little bit of a backlog going. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you've already heard this on Friday. If you want to get early access to all the podcasts and videos and all that kind of shit, Patreon's the place to do it. Uh, for Even if you give fucking 50 cents a month, you get early access to everything. I don't, don't set a minimum on that shit. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, so uh, what? basically what I'm doing is um, trying to get myself a little backlog going because I'm, I'm going on a cruise soon. We're going on a little fucking cruise, man. Um, is this camera too far away? Hang on, I'm going to move this thing. Beware, headphone users. Is that too far away? Is that better? Is that? Oh, that's better, isn't it? All right. I thought that looked weird. Okay, so what I'm doing uh, soon is I'm going on a cruise. Because uh, my girl booked a cruise for us. And uh, look, I'm going to be honest. Didn't really want to go. Because I hate holidays. I don't want to stop. I never want to stop. But, uh, I think the last time I stopped and went on a holiday was after my first tour. And we went to Thailand. That was also my girlfriend forcing it upon me. She's like, you need a break. You need to stop. Slow down. You're killing yourself. You don't sleep properly. Six hours of sleep isn't enough. And I, my argument to that is, yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger only sleeps for six hours and look at what he did. That's my only argument, is yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> which isn't a very good argument. I mean, that'd, that'd, that'd be how I would get away with cheating on it. I'd be like, yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's forcing a holiday upon us. And you know what? Every time she does this, and by every time I mean the one other time she did this three years ago, uh, I'm like, no, don't. But this time I'm kind of, after the initial resistance, I'm like, yeah, it's a fucking good idea. I need a break. I need to stop just before the comedy special comes out in the next tour. Now that radio, we're on radio less, I just need 10 days off. We're going on a 10-day fucking cruise. And, um, guys, I don't... I'm excited for it, but I don't know if, if a sober person can actually enjoy 10 days in one place. I don't think that's possible. Like, if you're not allowed to work. I think that's why I work so often and why I do so much comedy, because I love comedy. And, and there's no, and I can't escape my reality. I think that's probably the one benefit of, of drinking and drugs is like, oh, I'm bored. That's right. I'm going to create a new space-time continuum with this fucking ayahuasca in my head for the next four hours. Or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change my, uh, my state of mind from sober to drunk. And now I'm having fun, even though no fun is happening, but I can't do that. So I have to fucking... Which is good, I suppose ultimately good, because it always forces me to create a reality that I enjoy. But I'm not sure if I created a reality where I'm on a fucking boat surrounded by the whitest people of all time with no personalities. I'm not sure that's a reality I will enjoy. <laughs> but at least I'll get to read some fucking books. I haven't, um, I'm trying to, trying to read more often, man. But yeah. I don't know what, what's going to happen on this cruise. Um, what's going to happen with the podcast is uh, I'm recording this podcast and then I'm going to record another one tomorrow. So this one will come out on Sunday in a couple days and then the next one will come out the next Sunday when I'm on the cruise. So uh, that's going to be a thing. So I'm not really going to have too much to talk about. I think this one will go for the full length but the next one might be a bit shorter just because I was like, oh... I need to kind of need a holiday, but then I'm like, yeah, but I can take a holiday and still make sure that you can't get the worst podcast of all time, can't I? And I'm pretty sure I can also get a video done. Like I just, man, this warehouse is fucking so good. Like for productivity and everything, I'm in here. I'm just in a creative zone and there's no one else here. No one's here to fucking talk to me. No one's here to distract me. No one's here to be like, hey, Lewis, what are you doing, man? Come and help me with this. It's like, no, I'm just in this fucking space. No one else is allowed in here. It's just me and my fucking ideas and all the camera gear that's expensive. Actually, I need to get that out before I go on the fucking cruise, man. Otherwise, I'll get robbed for sure. But anyway, what, what just happened is I just finished filming a lure review and I'm like, you know what? I'm in the mood for a podcast. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sit down on the fucking couch and do it. And I can because it's all set up. I just sit, sit down, plug in the camera 
hit record, and hey, we're going. And the podcast is happening. And I've never done, I don't think I've ever done two things in one day. Like two film things. I've done like a video and then later at night stand up, but I've never done a, like written a video, filmed it, and then been like, oh fuck, I'm going to film another one. Never done that. And uh, now I can. I mean, really, I'm recording this at like three. I'll finish this at 4.30 and then fuck it. I can just go and spend, have a little, how can I have a break for one hour and then spend two hours writing and then film another fucking thing? Like this, I don't know. I'm still, it's, this is like my first proper day in the warehouse since we've had it all set up. And, uh, like, man, it's everything that I wanted it to be. So thank you very much to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Um, I, I wanted to talk about that. Thank you very much to all the new people on Patreon, everyone who's supported me. It's really, really cool. The, the, the numbers of people supporting just shot straight up after I, after I did the warehouse video and it's, it's amazing. So thank you very much. And it, uh, you know what? Now I'm like, yeah, this was a really good idea. And even though I had to bump myself down the jeans money, I did get this jacket like five or six months ago. So I I can still wear this (laughs) and, uh, I'll just, I'm not, I mean, I don't need any more jeans. So I'm just going to live off jeans money for a little bit and, um, see, See if we can get myself back up there. Man, I can't wait for car money. Jeez, that's going to be fucking years away, isn't it? <laughs> um, speaking of, guys, I have, some, uh, I have some shocking news about my license. This might just fucking blow your minds. But I booked a fucking driver's lesson. Can you believe that shit, man? I booked a driver's lesson. 24 years old, no license. I booked it. And um, it's happening. Although... <laughs> I, I don't get too excited. It's not happening for three weeks. So I won't be able to talk about it because I'm like, oh, I don't want to start driving and then go on a fucking cruise and then and then start again. So I'm like, I booked it for after the cruise. I think it's on the 27th is when the first driver's lesson is. So I don't know when the, the next nearest podcast is, but you guys will be able to figure it out. The, the, the Sunday after the 27th of this month, there's going to be a driver's license update. And uh, I think I've been talking about that since the start of this podcast and we are almost three years in <laughs> which is it's horrendously pathetic but um that's happening so i'm got a driver's license I'm, I'm excited because the first driver's lesson that i ever got n- not good i think i think the reason why i don't have my license and i also don't have any hours is because my mum couldn't teach me. She stressed out too much. She would just freak out. She would sit there with her hand in front of her mouth, just breathing rapidly, which would then freak me out. And then all of a sudden, it's two incredibly stressed people terrified of a car, except the guy driving can't drive, <laughs> which makes the whole situation worse. So I couldn't drive with mum. I'm like, you, you freak me out. I can't do this. And she's like, oh, thank God, because you freak me out. And then I couldn't do it with dad because... He was the same, except he was like me. Where when when because when I get stressed, I just get real snappy and angry. Because I'm like, oh, I can't control the situation. Fuck you. I do that shit. And Dad was the same. So he'd sit in the passenger seat, and I would have to drive in his car, which is like a builder's car. It's a it's like a what does he drive? A Toyota Hilux, I think. But the gearbox is fucked and difficult, and really hard to change gears. And like, can we just can we just all of you cunts who drive manual and look down on everyone else who drives automatic, why? Someone tell me the benefit of driving a manual car other than burnouts. Okay, that's the only thing you got is burnouts and and Facebook statuses. You get... <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's the only benefit to driving a manual car is you get to do a burnout and you can post on Facebook about automatic car drivers being pussies and then you might get two likes. Those are the only benefits. So, oh man, I drive auto, I drive manual like, I drive manual like a real man. Like a real man. Oh yeah, what else do you do? Huh? Do you fucking shave your face with a knife? Like a real man? Do you not use electricity like a real man? What are you doing? It's it's technology. That's like being like, ah, oh, man, all these people with mobiles, oh, they're not real men. 
I exclusively use the phone that's attached to the fucking wall. You have to to call me. You have to schedule a time when I'm going to be home. And every time I find out your number, I need to write it down in a little notepad. And I can't text you. Sorry, ladies. No nudes. Like, why do you want to sit in a fucking chair going like this, moving your arm every time you move from fucking zero kilometers to 10, and then 10 to 60, and then 60 to 80? Fuck that. Automatic, much better. Forwards, backwards. That's all you need. That's all you need. Forwards and backwards. But but that being said, that's where it needs to stop, okay? We don't need anything else in cars than we already have, okay? We don't need this self-driving shit because, you know, that's when the... when Dude, I had this thought that fucking terrified me the other day, all right? Self-driving cars, okay? That's the next step, is cars that drive themselves and I can have a little snooze and read a book on my way to work and even a traffic jam doesn't bother me because the car will sort it out and usually traffic jams won't even fucking happen anyway because I bet they'll figure out a system to be like, hey, if everyone goes 10 kilometers slower and leaves this amount of space in between every car, there will be no traffic jams and even though we're going slower, it'll be an hour faster. That's what they'll figure out. I know they will. Oh, what's this? Oh, hey, hey, your boy just got an email with the final, what we think is the final edit of the comedy special. Oh, fuck, man. I can't wait to watch this shit. Oh, no, he also sent me an invoice. (laughs) Oh, fuck, I can't wait to open that. Oh, Oh, that's not expensive. I can afford that. Oh, man. Okay, I can't get distracted. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, self-driving cars, right? So what's going to happen? I thought this the other day. Of course, if all of the cars end up being self-driving or even have a self-driving mode. So when cars, when it becomes standard for every car to self-drive, every car will have human driving mode for when you want to do a burnout and post on Facebook about how self-driving cars suck. And then they'll have a self-driving mode. And you know... That at that point, all the cars are connected to the internet and someone can hack your car. And that's when everyone just starts to die. And the police go, oh, looks like it was an error in the computer. Bit of a malfunction. Nothing we can do. Meanwhile, all right, the fucking... Yeah? Hang on, someone's knocking on the door. One second. Alright, I'm back. Okay, you can't tell uh, because the lighting is the same because I'm in the warehouse, but uh, it's actually been like fucking six hours since I left. So so I don't know what I was talking about. Six hours have come and gone. Uh, My girl came over because um, she's doing something. She's starting a business. She needs to take photos, but the product that she's selling is really big. So she's like, hey, you know how you just got a warehouse so you can set up your business in it? Can I just, you know... The, on the first week completely take it over for like three days so I can do my thing um, and, and I'm like yeah sure I got no problem with that I do so I want to do this shit anyway you got to help out your girl what was I talking about oh yeah the government is going to start killing cunts with self-driving cars that's what's going to happen facts that's what's going to happen and, and you know what else the government what's going to happen right is all of a sudden alright there'll be a protest There'll be a protest, there'll be a riot, there'll be uh, a fugitive, there'll be uh, a really important person that needs to get from A to B. And instead of fucking around and sending the police in, they'll send in your car with you in it. They'll just override everyone's car, they'll lock the doors, you can't get out, and then they'll just move them in like automated riot police. So if the Pope needs to get from fucking Melbourne Town Hall all the way to fucking Flinders Street, bam! Automated cars just, they, they part the sea of automated cars. And it doesn't matter where you're going, 
Doesn't matter how late you're gonna be. Oh, but I've gotta get to work. If I'm five minutes late to work again, I'll get an official warning. And you only get two strikes and then you get fired. Tough luck. The Pope's gonna get to the train for some reason. I don't know why. Doesn't matter. Or you're gonna have a protest about the government. You know, well, people start protesting. Stop taking over our cars. Stop taking over our cars. You know what they'll do? They'll take over your fucking car. Run over the whole protest. Next thing you know, no one's protesting that because they all died. They all got squished. That's that. I've had that thought and I was like, man, that's what's going to happen. Your car is going to start being used as crowd control for other people. But hey, let's keep upgrading cars. You know what? Maybe, maybe thinking about that, maybe we should go back to manual. Because the first step was automatic, the second step was even more automatic. As in, you don't have to touch the fucking wheel. That's the step after automatic, is double automatic. Literally, doesn't need a human. The auto does it, matically. (laughs) But I'm not learning in a manual car. I refuse to. I don't want to do that. Everyone's like, oh, you need to learn into a man, you need to learn... A manual car so that if you're ever in a situation, an emergency situation, and you need to drive manual, you'll know how to do it. Can someone tell me when that will ever happen? Please, enlighten me. Seriously, if you have ever been in an emergency situation, and you needed a manual driver, email me. I want to hear your story, because I don't believe that that that, that happens. It's not like it's not like being a doctor or knowing CPR. You probably should know CPR. I mean, I don't, but you probably should. It's not like that. It's not like someone has a heart attack and they all gather around him. And then someone just goes, "Does anyone here know how to change gears?" <laughs> Does anyone here know how to change gears while on a slight incline? Can anyone reverse down a hill? while changing gears without blowing out the gearbox and starting the car again? You don't need that shit. And you know what? If I ever am in a situation where I've been stabbed in the chest and it's either drive like a manual fucking... It's either like drive a manual Kia Sorento to the hospital or die in the street. I'm dying. You won't catch me in that fucking Kia. Switching gears like some kind of idiot. Automatic or nothing. (laughs) I don't even want to know how to be able to change gears. So my first driving lesson is on the 27th. So I'll keep you guys updated about that. Uh, I'll let you know the latest that's happening in the warehouse. Oh man, there's so many fucking problems. Like it's amazing, but there are so many problems that I can't afford to fix right now. That makes me go, maybe I should have just waited until after the tour. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have waited. Because this place wouldn't be would have been gone. But there's a lot of issues that... It's like, you know, when... It's shit that you would only ever find out. Like, you couldn't find that out by touring the place. You'd only find out by using it all the time. So, the problems that we've discovered is... There are holes in the fucking roof. <laughs> There's holes in the roof. So as you can see, it's all fucking corrugated iron, right? There's a brick wall on one side of it, which faces the street. But then the rest of it is just iron because there's there's like a big warehouse behind me. There's an even bigger one next to me. And then outside is just like the, the gate courtyard thing. So there's three panels that are just corrugated iron. And where, and the roof is iron. And where the roof meets the walls, holes. No one sealed that shit. So now, rain doesn't get in. Rain doesn't get in. For some reason, I don't know why, even though there's holes in the roof, rain never gets in. But, leaves do. Leaves. All the time. Because there's big trees outside that are tall in the fucking building. And they blow onto the roof. And then they come from the roof and the wind pushes them down the holes. And they fall on my floor. And then I step on them and mush them into the carpet. Look, there's a leaf right now that just fell while I was doing this podcast. Look at this shit. An old leaf. Hear that? From the sky, man. So that needs to be fixed. 
I don't know how though. We're gonna have to climb. I think that's the landlord's problem. We're like, hey man, so there's holes in my fucking roof. Are you gonna fix that or? Second problem. They promised us Wi-Fi. Big deciding factor in in signing the lease. Oh, we get Wi-Fi for free. Fuck yeah. Hook me up. Signed it. Didn't check if the Wi-Fi worked, did I? No, that'd be too smart for me. I got excited by the idea. Oh, I got a warehouse so I can film and work whenever I want. I didn't stop to think for like one second that the internet is the most integral part to what I do. You need the internet to upload a video, fuck it. I need the internet to decide what I'm going to do a video on. <laughs> I can't do videos without the internet. So I get in there, set up all my shit. I'm like, all right, now that I've spent three days setting everything up and I'm ready to begin, only now, after I've signed the contract, set everything up, bought some extra gear, only now will I test to see if the, <laughs> to see if the Wi-Fi works. And does it work? What do you? No, it doesn't. So there's no Wi-Fi, which is fucked. No, there is Wi-Fi, but it only works outside the warehouse. For some reason, the signal doesn't reach inside the tin. So the guy working here is like, Oh, Louis, I, uh, I uh, try and uh, fix Wi-Fi, but it uh, doesn't come through wall. I'm like, okay, so how can we fix this? He goes, I don't know. And then he, w <laughs> and then he walked away. So now I don't know what to do. I don't know. And then he walked away. I wish I had that, man. I wish I had that level of confidence of like, I'm not going to help. Man, you, you can only do that if you're Eastern European. If a Japanese dude did that to me, I don't know. I would, I would get him. If an African dude did that to me, I uh, know, man. I'd pull him up on it. I'm like, hey, no, don't, not, I don't know. You know. I need internet. I signed a contract with internet in it. If a white dude was like, I don't know, man. I'd be like, no, not good enough. But Eastern European? I don't know. <laughs> what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. So... I'm going to attempt to give it... That, that's, that's my dream, man. I just, want to, I just want to reach Eastern European levels of I don't give a fuck if you're offended. Like that level of, of disregard to not only other people's emotions, but your own. I don't know. I do not feel. I do not have emotions. I, uh, my family eat potato for 200 years. Make potato vodka. Communism happened. We all... Communism happened for 200 years. We all pretend it's a good idea. For 200, 200 years, we pretend communism was a good idea and ignore our feelings. And soon, soon, the entire eastern part of Russia built up an immunity to feelings, not only our own feelings, but concern for feelings of others. So now when, when long Australian men ask me if if I have Wi-Fi, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. So, yeah, there's holes in the roof, which need to get fixed. The, the internet doesn't work, which I'm, I'm thinking actually just might, we might actually have to run a fucking cable into my warehouse, and I don't know who's going to pay for that. I'm, I don't want to. But I know that if I ask him to do it, he's going to say, No, I don't. I don't pay. I don't pay you. You want Wi-Fi? No one else. No, everyone else storing things. Everyone, uh, store here. Wood, wood, wood shop there. Uh, no Wi-Fi for you. No Wi-Fi for him. No Wi-Fi for her. No Wi-Fi for you. I, I get Wi-Fi. You don't. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, no Wi-Fi, because, I don't know, that's it. But the, but the thing that annoys me, the, this is the worst one. 
And this is going to be a little bit visual for those listening to the audio version. I'm going to explain what's happening. But decided to check out the water situation that's going on. Went to the tap. And I remember when I toured the place, he showed me the taps. And I'm like, is that water drinkable? And he goes, huh? Yes, yes, of course, it's drinkable. It's water. It comes out on tap, of course. You can drink it. I drink it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a bottle of the water. I've got it in my hands. This is 1.25 liters of the water that I got out of the tap. That this dude says he's been drinking for years. And I think... We may find the reason why. I don't know. This is the water that's in the tap. I don't know if you can tell, but that is not clear. That, this water, look at that, is yellow. The. <laughs> this is what the dude's been drinking. For years is yellow water. This is some third world shit. I don't know what's in the taps. I don't know what's in the fucking taps, but it's this. You can't drink this shit. I can see. You probably can't tell because the camera's not high quality enough. I can see shit. In, there's an ecosystem in this, and I just got it out of the tap. This will kill me. The fucking plastic bottle. Is gonna melt. Whatever's in this tap could break down plastic and save the environment, but poison all of us. So I'm gonna put that here. It's on the desk here for the rest of the podcast. It looks like piss. <laughs> so I've got a water cooler, I've got one from Office Works. And uh, I'm just going to bring water from home, I guess. I don't know. Do you know what I've done? I've essentially moved in to a fucking refugee camp. <laughs> I'm in a tin shed. I've got no bathroom of my own. I don't have proper sleeping quarters. I can't sleep here. I don't. The walls are tin. It's freezing as fuck. And there's holes in the roof. And there's no drinkable water. And I'm surrounded by Eastern European refugees who don't give a fuck about my well being. Oh man. So, yeah, that, I mean, but uh, aside from that, it's perfect and I fucking love it. <laughs> um, I know I'm complaining a lot, but I, I, I truly do love this. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a start. Oh, man. Hang on, i got to pause this. i got to get my inhaler. One sec. I need my inhaler. Oh, yeah, I forgot to... Um, hang on. I forgot to tell you why it took six hours. It uh, had barely anything to do with my girl. So, you know, I said... <laughs> You know, I said that I, that at the start of the podcast, I was like, man, this place is amazing. I can film a video and then do a podcast. I've never been able to do that before. And then after this podcast, I might just film another one. Well, while my girl was here, she came over. I'm like, hey, well, she's working. I'll just do some editing. I'll edit the Lou review that I just filmed. That's productive. Put the SD card in the camera, load it all up, import everything. Looks beautiful. Looks better than Lou Review has ever looked. But I didn't plug the microphone in. <laughs> so it's just me really enthusiastically talking without sound. And I had to film it again. I hate that was fucking an hour down the drain of... But, it's been filmed. And you know what's good is, if, I, if this was at home, I never would have been able to do that. 
I would have been like, oh, what? Oh, great. The video is just not coming out now. It's just not coming out because I can't film it again because I've already been screaming for an hour and I told everyone I'll be done by this time. I'm fucked. It's not coming out this week. So, hey, Lou Review, it's filmed and it's coming out soon. Oh, man. But, but just know that no, no, no matter how happy I look in that video, I was fucking seething. <laughs> and, I was, and I wasn't having any fun. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh yeah, comedy special. So, yesterday's, lower last week's podcast, sorry, I mentioned that uh, a big American company has reached out to me and they want to speak to me. They've seen the special. I've spoken to them. I want to clear up. Obviously, a lot of people had a lot of questions and a couple of concerns. No matter what happens... If it gets if it gets picked up by fucking Netflix, not that it will, but if it, even if it got picked up by fucking Netflix, every single person who pledged gets the download sent to their email, and they get everything that was promised in the crowdfund. I that's a rule that I made for myself before I started talking to networks. I don't care who the fuck they are; they will not get me to alter rewards that people have already paid for. If Netflix was like, hey, you can't go on our platform unless you don't give 3,000 people what they paid for because then 3,000 people will have it and we only want it to be on Netflix, I'll be like, well, go fuck yourself. I guess it's on my website then. Um, So yeah, I'm not going to fuck over 3,000 people who helped my dream come true just because a streaming service wants me to do that. Not that that has been asked of me. Has not been asked. But... um, if it was us, just know the answer would be no. I would never do that. Um, so, what's happening with it is obviously during this podcast, I got the final edit of the uh, comedy special, and I haven't watched it because I can't download it using mobile internet because I don't have fucking Wi-Fi. But I imagine from what I saw with the uh, the sitting sit-in edit session with Antonio, the final one, it's going to be amazing. Which means, and I've been talking this this distribution company that want, from America that want to take it and they want to pitch it to Netflix and HBO and Showtime and all these other networks, is what they've told me. Uh, so now I just need to make a decision on whether I just want to put it out by myself or I want these American people to give it a go as well. I need to see the, the, the deals of the term. I'm, I'm going to be very broad. I'm not going to use any specifics in the podcast. All of that will come out in the documentary because I don't want to fuck up any potential or ongoing relationships, but all of it will be put in the documentary. I've been filming everything, all of the behind-the-scenes stuff and all of the details and everything that I'm thinking while the decisions are being made so that you guys can watch that after it. those thoughts I'm having doesn't affect it, whether I said yes or said no or whatever. It's all happened. <coughs> but... I think you guys are going to have a release date very fucking soon. So my plan now is to make a decision on the distribution people in the next couple of days before I go on the cruise. Then I'm going to go on the cruise for 10 days. I'm going to fucking relax. I'm going to stop thinking about it. And then when I come back from the cruise, it's fucking game time. Uh, And I think you guys are going to get a release date quite soon after the cruise. All right? So that's where I'm going to leave it. That's where I'm going to leave the comedy special. Hoodies are being made. I've not forgotten about hoodies. And uh, the poster obviously will not come out until after the special because I don't want to reveal it. Um, But all of the rewards are pretty much on their way to be facilitated. I think people who got just t-shirts have got the t-shirts. People who got t-shirts and hoodies have not got t-shirts yet because I want to send them as one. Otherwise, it's going to be twice as expensive for no reason. So I'm waiting on hoodies. And then all the DVD people will obviously get the DVDs when the special comes out. So, yeah, guys, very, very fucking exciting. Um, oh, also, if you the if you check if you Google Lewis Spears Indiegogo, you can still pledge to it, and that all that is is just a pre-order. So all these people are like, how do I pre-order? At the moment, I don't have a fully set up system for it, but the best way to do it is through Indiegogo. 
So if you pledge there, uh, you'll get the reward when they're sent out. <coughs> um, and then at some point, when the release date is announced, obviously it'll have its own. It'll have its own website. I'll shut down the Indiegogo page, and it'll have its own website and all that kind of shit. But for now, best way to secure rewards and all that kind of shit is the the Indiegogo thing. And that's that's the news of the comedy special. I'm staying pretty tight lipped and very broad and not getting the specifics. I will not do that until the documentary. But you guys will. Hey, release date coming soon. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Also, we've done the trailer, and it looks fucking... Oh, I'm going to shut up! I'm going to shut up. That's it. That's all I'm saying. It's fucking good. Right, uh, with that said, shall we get into miscellaneous bit at the end? Uh, I think we should. Uh, before I do, consider supporting me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do. Videos, podcasts, like I said, I'm recording this one on Friday. Uh, so, people listening to this will get it two days earlier than everyone else. And... Uh, also, the same goes with videos too. So, and especially because I'm getting a backlog before the cruise, you guys are going to get a Lou review and then another video way before, while I'm on the cruise, and then everyone else has to fucking wait. Um, all right. So, Google Lewis Spears Patreon if you want to help me uh, fix the holes in the fucking roof. <laughs> all righty. Uh, so, last week, I read, I clickbaited you with two different ones, and I picked the most exciting one. Here's the second most exciting one, which, upon reading, I think, actually, I made a mistake, and this is the most exciting one. All right. This one <coughs> uh, is entitled, My Fuck Buddy's Racist Housemate. So, you know it's going to be good. Hey, Lou. I love your shit. I've been to every one of your shows since your first year. Man, that's my first year in that little 70-seater. Oh, and this chick is not joking around. I recognize this name. I know all the I know the people that regularly like my shit for years because I just see their names all the time and this chick's no joke. I don't know what she wants to be called. I'm not going to say her name, but I appreciate you very much. I I I see you enjoying my shit for years. I didn't know that you'd come to all of the shows though. That's fucking amazing that you would see me in that little shithole place where my head touched the roof and you're like oh that guy was pretty good I'm gonna see him again <laughs> um, uh, one of your shows <clears throat> every one of your shows since the first year it's absolutely sick watching you go I respect your hustle and your insane work ethic alright now that's out of the way boy oh boy do I have a story for you call me Eve alrighty oh Eve what a fancy fake name alrighty Eve <clears throat> um not too long ago, I jumped on Tinder. Sorry, I think I'm losing my voice a little bit just from doing the podcast, filming Lou Review, and then filming Lou Review again, and then now doing the podcast. I think I'm losing my voice today a bit much. <coughs> 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 Sorry. Uh -um. All right. All righty, Eve. Not too long ago, I jumped on Tinder. Not for anything serious, like the rest of the fuckboy population. Uh, I was literally only there for a route. Yeah, Eve, that's what everyone's there for. You don't fucking kid yourself. No one's doing me like, oh, I'm going to find the girl of my dreams on Tinder. It's like, no, I'm going to find the pussy that I settle for. <laughs> that's what Tinder is. No one's looking for a wife. Everyone's looking for a route. <clears throat> uh, I was literally only there for a route. Good on you, Eve. Get that route for you. And because finding the good puss in the lesbian world is a lot more... Oh, you're gay. Dude, I've got such a big fucking lesbian fan base. Which is so... I mean, it's cool, but I don't know where they're coming from and I don't know what they're getting out of me. Is it because I look like Ruby Rose if she had cancer? I don't understand what I'm getting. If you're a lesbian woman listening to this, what do I do for you? Well, I don't get it. Because that's definitely... I have this weird, weird pockets. I've got like... I'd say the biggest subgroup of people is lads. And I understand where they're coming from. They're coming from the cursor, me wearing Nike Air Maxes, me being friends and being a fan of Aussie rap and using it in my videos. I understand where they're coming from. <clears throat> but there's two groups that I don't... I don't know where they're from. Oh, then the, the biggest group is lonely internet nerds. And I get that because that's what I am. I totally understand that. Lonely internet nerds, me. Aussie lad rat guys, me as well. But two groups, I don't understand why they're here, is one, uh, Muslim women, not men, 
like strict Muslim women. I have all these people on Twitter wearing fucking hijabs tweeting at me. Uh, and I don't, I appreciate them, but I don't know where they're from or what I'm doing for them because I'm the whitest cunt on planet Earth. And then the other subgroup that I understand even less than that, I mean, I think maybe some of them came from Khaled because he's got a big Muslim fan base and we've done a lot of shit together. So maybe they're from Khaled, I don't know. But the group that I don't understand at all is the lesbians. Where are these dykes coming from? I don't get it. I've never really talked about lesbian issues other than when they email me about their latest pussy eating dramas. I don't know where they're coming from. So if you're a, if you're a lesbian, send an email to contactelusmias.com. How did you find out about me? And why do you like me? I, not that I don't think you should. I just want to know where you've come from. And I want to know how to get rid of you bloody lesbians. It's against the word, the Lord's word. <laughs> anyway. So we're Eve's problem. All right. Because finding the good puss, and she's put a trademark sign here, the good puss TM. Because <clears throat> finding the good puss in the lesbian world is a lot more effort. Yeah, I think lesbian women have it the fucking worst, man, because... I don't know, you just... Like, gay dudes, you can tell. It's like gay women, and I've seen this chick, I know what she looks like, she doesn't look like a gay woman, because the only people... Like, gay men, I can look at a dude, and by the way that he walks, I'm like, oh, he likes dick. Like, if his, if his wrist is slightly limp, not full on, but just a little bit, I'm like, oh, he likes dick. And that's fine, but I can tell. I think I've got pretty good gaydar. Only a couple people have, have slipped under it. But women, unless they wear... This is the only way to 100% know. <laughs> this is the only way with that you... This is the... What am I trying to say? This is the only way you can tell... If a woman is definitely gay. This is the only thing that will 100% of the time give it away every time. If you see a woman with short hair and a denim vest. <laughs> if they've got a denim vest, they love pussy, man. That's I, You've never seen a woman in a denim vest who doesn't also love diving down on Muff. That's it. That's the dress code for I'm definitely gay and I've never even thought about dick once in my life. You chuck on a vest and you have short hair. That is the I have never thought about dick in my life outfit. That's the uniform. I'll never touch a dick. Check out my vest. <laughs> That's how you can. That's the only way you can tell if a woman is gay with a hundred percent certainty. Denim vest. Outside of that, it's anyone's guess. She could be a drunk bisexual, or she could be one of those lipstick lesbians. You don't know. The only way to tell is the denim vest. You know what they say? She wears the denim vests. She loves the fucking breasts. <laughs> So yeah, I feel for you, Eve. <clears throat> it sounds like uh, being a lesbian will be very confusing. Uh, finding good puss in the lesbian world is a lot more effort. <clears throat> Tinder has that GPCP. G oh, sh good pussy at competitive prices. Oh, good. Competitive. I thought it was the other fucking CP. Then I would have reported you to the cops. Uh, Tinder has that good pussy at competitive prices. Um, <clears throat> after a few days, I match with this 11 out of 10. Let's call her Andrea. We meet up for a drink and we get along perfectly. Perfect equilibrium, betwe equilibrium between banter and flirtation. I end up going home with her from the bar and we end up having sex. Great sex. The next week, she booty calls me and I meet her first housemate. Oh, good on you. You had a good, you had a good route. Oh, please send me another email. Who pays for the date? Please tell me that. I need to know. Is it... Is it whoever's in the dead of this? <laughs> oh, fuck. If you were a dead of this, you pay for dinner. And you're on top. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm generalizing. But this is... This is good shit. 
I, I, hit, I hit a bit of a gold, I hit a vein of gold with the denim vest stuff and I'm going to run with it, alright? Well, well, I've lost my, I've lost my fucking place. Who cares? Denim vest is way better than this email. I'm kidding. Uh, alright, uh, the next week she booty calls me and I meet her first roommate, a girl in her 20s. She told me literally the most uncharismatic, boring ass story I've ever heard in my life, but she was super nice. Okay, so you're like me, you're an asshole. You're like, oh, boring. Andrea and I hung out for a few more minutes before heading back to her room for our rendezvous. Again, awesome sex. That brings us to our most recent encounter, and man did it escalate quickly. I rock up at 10pm Eastern Standard Time. Standard booty call arrival. I was going to say that, but you fucking wrote it. Uh, and she tells me that we've got the house to ourselves. Ace, I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Yeah, fucking couch sex. Hey, let's, f let's scissor on the fridge. Why? Because we can. <laughs> let's, let's fucking 69 on the kitchen bench. Why? Because no one's here. And now, let's scissor in the fridge again, because the chill was arousing. <clears throat> um, you can guess what happened next? After a while, when we finished up, we were laying and chatting about a magazine when she tell That's so fucking gay. That's... You were talking about a magazine after you just fucked a woman? You know what? I think talking about the magazine is gayer than you scissoring in the fridge. <laughs> chatting about a magazine... Oh, this is magazine that I really love. Oh, I love that magazine. That's gay as fuck, man. Good on you. Uh, when she tells me that she's got a copy in the next... Oh, you guys have... You guys subscribe to the same magazine. That's fucking so gay. Oh, my God. You're subscribed to... Yes. 20% off. Oh, my God. Fist me. Um, she tells me she's got a copy in the next room. We put our shirts on because it's fucking freezing at this, at this point and sit under a blanket on the couch in the living room with the magazine and you read it together. Ah, oh, fucking, that's, that's almost as gay as the denim vest. At this point, <clears throat> her housemate comes home drunk from a Tinder date. He's this tall guy who comes in loudly complaining of his boring date. Wait, is this the same housemate who was boring? A girl in her 20s. Okay, so the first housemate was a boring girl. But that's not the racist person? Oh, okay. So then you were just you just wrote that thing about the boring girl just because you're an asshole. I mean, I can fuck with that. I get that. I mean, it was pointless, but, you know, you've got to be a cunt. <clears throat> um, after what? Blah, blah. Magazine. Denim vest. Guy comes home. All right. This tall guy who comes in loudly complaining about his boring date who he kept calling a bitch because he didn't, she didn't want to come home with him. I'm thinking, charming, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to come home with this cunt? He stops and sees me and says, wait, are you Eve? To which I respond, yes. <clears throat> and he's visibly confused. It's clear thinking is apparently hurting his head because he screwed up his face and made a weird snorting sound before saying, oh, I just didn't expect you to be black. Oh, that sucks. Uh, you what, cunt? Firstly, for clarity, I'm not black, I'm Lebanese. Blur, I'm not black, I'm Lebanese, okay? Just because my, my skin is tan doesn't mean I'm black, bro. I'm a fucking Lebanese, I'm le I'm, <laughs> I'm lesbianese, okay, bro? <laughs> Fuck off. I like pussy and I like cars. Those are two things that I enjoy. You, now, I'm, I'm sorry, Eve, now I'm being fucking racist and homophobic. I'm not, I'm not helping the situation. You what cunt? Firstly, I'm not black. I'm Lesbianese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lebanese. Sorry. I'm Lebanese. So I'm olive slash tan at best. Anyway, he proceeds to make himself a bowl of cereal and invites himself into our discussion and post-sex blow. Yeah, what a fuckhead. He takes his cereal and instead of sitting at a table, he kneels, puts his bowl on the floor and puts his elbows down with his ass up and starts eating... Exactly like a dog, but with a spoon. And then he keeps talking about how shook he was that I was black. Here's a direct quote. Please read this in your best drunk bogan fuckboy voice. Hey man, it's cool that you're black. 
I just don't know any black people. Like, uh, when I... Ah, this voice sucks. This sounds like your lesbianese voice. Hang on, let me do something else. Hey, man, it's cool that you're black. I just I just didn't know any black people. Like, when I broke my finger, I had to go to Danny No Hospital. And there were black people everywhere. But, like, not a bad amount. But they were... <laughs> what's a bad amount? Not a bad amount, but they were everywhere. I mean, you're hot, but, you know... That's fucking... That, that is fucked. Although, I do remember the first time I went to Danny Nong, I actually was not shocked, but like, oh shit, I didn't know there were this many black people in Australia. Like, I'd never been to an African community, and I went there and I was like, oh fuck, there's like lots of black people in Australia. I didn't know that. Like, I thought... I always thought... I knew it was heaps of Asians and lots of Indian people, and, um, <clears throat> and then, you know, the Aboriginal population, but I didn't know that we had, like, quite a strong African population. So I remember I was shocked. Or surprised. Shocked is the wrong word. But I didn't go up to, like, the... the like, the first slightly brown person I see. It was like, but I had no idea there was fucking black people in Daniel, man. I mean, you know, you're, you're hot, so it's alright that you're black. But if you were ugly and black, that'd be pretty fucked. Like, I didn't do that. I, I just had the thought in my head of like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you're hot, but you know. What do you mean? You're hot, but you know, you're fucking, you're black, so. He then made a whole bunch of creepy com comments to Andrea about how at least she's getting laid and how his date with the, was a bitch. At one point, he looked at me while telling her this and said, bitches, right? So my question is, what the fuck do I do? I genuinely, I generally have no issue telling a girl to drop dead when she says something weird and racist like that. But I froze up and I had no idea what to do with this guy. I didn't want to agitate him because he was drunk. And even sober, I wouldn't know what to say. Do I keep sleeping with this girl and risk running into this asshole again? Uh, another thing is, I don't want to make things awkward for Andrea, like cause problems between housemates. Uh, I'm not the one who has to live with him. At the, at, and at the end of the day... I'm not the one who has to live with him at the end of the day. Your advice will be mad appreciated. Have a shit one, Eve. <clears throat> well, here's what you do, Eve. First, you chuck on your denim vest. <laughs> and you go, hey, mate. I don't know. Look. One or two things, right? Either he is racist, in which case, fuck him. Or... He was just drunk and he was saying fucking stupid shit that came out racist just because he was surprised that you weren't white. And then he just started word vomiting. I mean, I wasn't there, so maybe that didn't happen. If that didn't happen, disregard what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, if it was just because he was drunk, maybe you'll never have to, even if you see him again, it won't. Nothing will happen. He'll just be a normal dude. You haven't met him when he's sober, is what I'm saying. <clears throat> um, so maybe he, maybe he just fucked up because he was drunk. Or, he's a hardcore member of the KKK. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't know. I guess, can you, can you fuck her at your house? Or do you have conservative Lebanese parents? Um, I guess that could be an option. Rooter at your house. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. I would say that if you're getting some good pussy, you're going to figure it out. Just, I don't know, meet the dude when he's sober. And if he's still an asshole, then you have, then you have a big decision to make, which is, oh, do I exclusively fuck this chick at my house or at Airbnbs if you can afford it? Which you probably can't. I mean, that's ridiculous. If I wanted to fucking, if I had to spend, uh, you know, $200 on an Airbnb every time I wanted to get my dick wet, I would spend at least like... I mean, I, would, I wouldn't spend that much. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's an option too. You can go to, go to your house and fuck her there. You know, I'm sure you have a fridge, you could scissor there. Um, if that's not an option, because, I don't know, whatever's happening in your house, I would just go there and try and meet him when he's sober. Because potentially he's one of those drunks and you haven't actually met him. You've just met drunk him and he's a completely different person. Uh, or the other option is he is a really hardcore racist even when he is sober. Uh, and then I think you would just have to avoid him. So only go there when he's not going to be there. And make sure this chick knows that. Say, hey, uh, you know, I really want to do that thing that you like with my tongue. But I'm not going to do it when, when racist guy is there. Sorry. 
And then, hey, if you're really good at it, she might fucking move out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that'd be my advice is meet him sober and then you'll have a real idea of whether or not he is a fucking racist. Um, <clears throat> or if he... Well, it's, you, I mean, your options aren't very good either, right? Either way, right? So either he's really nice when he's sober, e- either he's a racist when he's sober and that means he's a racist, which sucks, or he's really nice when he's sober, which means he's a closet racist, which also sucks. But hey... At least he can keep it in the closet, right? You know, and and isn't that isn't that a fucking role reversal? The the fucking gay woman's out of the closet, but the white dude is stuck in there. Suck on that, mate. That that'd be my advice: is is meet him sober, or talk to your roommate and ask her about racism and shit. Um, all right, I hope that helps, Eve. Give me an update on how it goes. Uh, and if you guys want, uh. If you this one went a bit long, I was going to do two, but now I'm going to do one. Um, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. If you want early access to it, Patreon's the way to do it. Make sure to give me five stars on uh, on iTunes if you have it, and uh, yeah, join join the Speared Sundays Facebook group. Just search Speared Sundays group or something. I can't remember what it is. You'll find it. Speared Sundays. You'll find the group, and I'll add you into it. And people are posting a whole bunch of memes about me looking like Nicolas Cage, which uh, will be. Well, that sucks. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you later. Um, and to to to, to all, all the uh, all the lesbian women uh, out there that like my stuff, I love you too. I can't wait to see your denim jackets at my show. All right. See you later. Have a shit one. <laughs>